Yeah, I'm everything around the gold star. Oh, fancy. Can we get that larger? All right. Good, I, good evening, everybody. Tonight we have Pamela Edwards. He's, she's from the Greenville Club. She's going to teach us how to color wood prospectively. With About a lot color of different and wood. Colors, color and wood and how to put the right thing on the right place, right? Yeah, something Pamela like Edwards. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, can we start with the slide presentation? Um, I've been turning wood for less than a year. Um, my first trade is artist, which I've been an artist, a professional artist, for more than 15 years. Um, and I'll tell you a little more about that in a second. <laughs> okay, so um, this is one of my largest projects. It's the largest mural in Hunt County, actually, called High Cotton. And I painted that uh, about a year and a half ago. It took me five months all by myself. So that is um, one way that I have used color. Um, next slide, please. These are just a couple of my projects um, to get an idea of what I've done. Also, I created these traffic boxes for the city of Odessa. And they actually tell a story along 8th Street, if you've been there. Um, adding a little color th to the desert environment. It's pretty brown out there. OK, next slide. Um, oddly enough, a couple of years ago, I started painting images of wood, like trees. I was really inspired by trees, and this was before I started turning. Um, so I, I would travel, and I would see all these different kinds of bark, and I would paint, do these abstract paintings of wood. So I have the smaller images are the, the wood that I referenced for those last three. So they kind of look like it but it's abstract artwork. So this is sort of my artwork that I've done. Next slide, please. And this is some of my woodwork that I've done. So um, that first one in the bottom left corner is um, a plaque that I made for um, a local citizen in Greenville. And I turned the stand, and then I put glass and um, plexiglass in there. And then those cookies and milk with the mint on the side was um, our quarterly challenge, I think, in Hunt County. And it was a centerpiece for our holiday uh, dinner that we had. And then um, down there are some of the sort of jewelry accessories that I've done. I have on the necklace, um, which is purple heart, black walnut. And I can't remember if it's yellow heart or uh, boat arc that I used, the yellow wood. Um, but those chopsticks I made for my hair are made of a boat arc. And then the uh, bracelets, I have one of them on, and I can't remember what that wood is either. I want to say it's a black cherry. Okay. So, in case you're wondering how all of this is relevant, wood has color to it, and then sometimes you want to add color to wood, right? And so sometimes it may be difficult to figure out what's going to look nice together. So I'm going to try to help you with that. Um, so those are some examples of colored woods. Um, red heart, purple heart. Box elder to me is kind of pink looking because it's red and um, sort of red and white together. Um, yellow heart. I have not found a blue wood. If anybody knows about a blue wood, tell me because I've been looking for one of those. But um, I found every other color in the rainbow. Pandora? Is this an exotic wood? <laughs> in space? <laughs> no, I don't know about this. <laughs> I think he's messing with me. Um, <laughs> and there's even Avatar. Oh, OK. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's a few years back. I don't remember that. Okay, and there's even white woods and black woods and, you know, every color of brown. All right, so we're going to start with the primary colors. Um, these are the only colors you ever need to know. If you can't remember anything else from this presentation, know that there are only really three colors, okay? 
So um, you cannot create red, yellow, or blue from mixing other colors. These are colors that exist in nature. So I'm going to do a little mixing demonstration for you. So these are called primary colors, again, because they just are. They're the first, they're the original, and you can't mix anything else in the world to make them. These are just acrylic paints, if anybody's wondering. So red, yellow, and blue are my primaries. So to make secondary colors, which we'll show you the chart in a minute, um, you mix primary colors. So if you mix red and yellow, you should get orange. A lot of yellow. <laughs> you should get an orange color. Does that look orange? Okay. Hmm? It's getting there. You don't need a lot of red to make yellow orange, honestly. The, yeah, the water turned orange. Good enough. Uh, <laughs> if you mix red and blue, you should get purple. Or some, some semblance of purple. That's too dark to see. Up there. It looks purple down here. <laughs> yeah, it looks almost black there. That one's purple? Okay. Sorry for you guys over there. It's purple, I promise. <laughs> and then if you mix um, yellow with blue, you should get green. Okay, so these are secondary colors. Can you show the um, slide, please? Yes. Okay, so the secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. And I made those from just those first three colors, the primary colors, right? So these are the secondary colors that come from mixing two primaries. And then, can I see the next slide, please? There are what we call, oh wait, oh, that's just telling you what I just did, mixing the colors. <laughs> yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so then there is a third level, it's getting complex, um, called tertiary colors, right? So if I mixed the purple and the red, I'd get like a fuchsia color. And if I mixed, um, let's see, the blue and the purple, I'd get like this pretty indigo, right? and so on. Um, can I see the next slide? This will be online, if anybody is wondering. <laughs> I'm not expecting you to remember everything. Um, so a color wheel shows the relationship between colors. And you can purchase a color wheel um, if, if you're ever curious at like a Joanne or a Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Um, any sort of art store will have a color wheel available for less than five bucks. Um, and this helps you understand the relationship between colors. Okay, next slide, please. Are there any questions so far? I mean, I'm trying to keep it real simple, but no curiosity yet. Okay. I will get to that, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> All right, so analogous colors, if you've ever heard the term analogous, it means the colors are side by side um, or in the same color family. So um, red and orange and pink are all analogous colors or um, like I'm wearing purple and pink, um, these are analogous colors, right? Bright green, yellow are analogous because they're next to each other on the color wheel. Warm colors are mostly 
reds and yellows. So these are colors that are really, they scream at your, your eyes, right? If you have, um, let's see. Let me put some colors together. Okay, so I have a dark color here, a cool color, I should say, and a warm color. Your eye goes to this warmer color, or here, even on this one, your eye goes straight to that yellow. So um, think of warm colors like the sun. They're bright. They jump at you. They scream at you. Okay. So like I said, reds to yellows, oranges even, are all warm colors. So think of sun. Think of fire. That's warm. Okay. Can we go back to the slides, please? Yes. And so cool colors um, tend to be darker more refreshing to the eyes. They give your eyes rest like shade or like the ocean or the sky, right? Cool colors are typically blues and greens. There are There is some crossover, like you can have a warm blue, but that's like color, not 101. This is 101. <laughs> that's a little more advanced, but you, you can have some crossover. You can have cool reds and all that fun stuff. But um, cooler colors, tend to be, they recede, and warm colors pop out at you. Okay, complementary colors. Who had that question about gray? Okay, we're getting to that. Complementary colors are um, opposites on the color wheel. So, like red and green are complementary colors. Blue and orange are complementary colors. And when you mix complementary colors, you get a gray or brown color. I can do a demo. Okay, so I'm going to mix my green with a little red. How's that looking? Kind of grayish, brownish. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's how you get a gray or a brown. Uh, you, browns tend to be a little warmer, in my opinion. So you would maybe add a little um, red or even yellow to make it more brown-like. Does that look right? It's hard to tell. I promise. <laughs> um, all right. Any two compliments. So yeah, let me try another one. I will mix my orange and my blue. Um, I'm running out of space. Orange, a little blue. Again, you get this sort of grayish brown color. The, well, and that's a matter of how much of each color you're putting in. So this isn't, this isn't precision color mixing here. There is precision color mixing, but that's not what I'm doing for you guys. <laughs> I'm not measuring how much of each color I'm putting in here. But um, you can get more precise. Uh, yes, next please. So complementary colors happen to look very good next to each other. Um, I think a lot of sports teams have sort of complementary colors, right? Like, um, huh? like the purple and yellow is like the Lakers. Sorry, I used to live in LA, I know that. I've seen the, <laughs> I've seen the blue and orange I want to say North Carolina or something, but I don't really. Denver? Okay. Florida? Uh, oh, the, the Cowboys? I know that one too. <laughs> so, yes, so compliments look good to each other, typically because you're pairing a warm color and a cool color. And so it makes the warm color pop, and the cool color just sort of recedes. It's like a background, and they, they work nicely together. It's harmony. So if you're ever in doubt, you can put compliments together and they'll work every time. 
Um, next slide, please. All right, and um, let's see. So gray and brown and black and white are not colors, okay? Um, they are what we call neutrals, and they look good with everything. Um, black and white are similar to the primary colors. You can't mix them from anything. Um, but if you mix black and white, you get grays, real gray. Yeah. Um, yeah, this to me, uh, when you're mixing color, you're more likely to get a brown. But um, it can look gray. But a true gray is going to come from black and white. And, okay. Hmm. Um, okay, so there are different color processes, different color um, systems, if you will. And I know of at least three or four different ones I had to memorize in school. Um, so there is the CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So really, for the, for the black and white, you're using the black. Um, there's RGB, which is what I'm showing you. For some reason, they call it red, green, blue, but it's actually red, yellow, and blue. And then there's the Munsell system and the Pantone system and many other systems. <laughs> but we're sticking to, to this. Um, actually, w when I save files, this is just an aside, I, I save them as RGB because it's less memory for the computer to only remember the three colors and they'll be more vivid when they print. Yes? Mm, that's a good question. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, right, one is, and it depends on if you're using pigment or light, but yes, one is all color and one is no color. And I think it's the opposite when you're using colored light. This guy knows. So, <laughs> um, yes. Right, it's not, right. It, yeah, it could go either way depending on what, <laughs> what you're doing. So, but black is not a color and white is not a color. Um, this guy was asking why, why are they not considered primaries? Because they're non-color. <laughs> That's my best answer. Yeah. yeah. Yes, another slide please. Okay, so a gray scale measures the lightness or darkness of a color. And something I learned very recently, um, I created, I created um, this uh, handout for you. You can download from the web page. Um, so you can have your own little walking gray scale. This is like a little pocket guide. Um, and it's got other notes on color. But something I recently learned is, can you uh, switch over? Yeah. If you take some colored film, right, suddenly it kind of removes the color and it's easier to measure your color on a grayscale than if you were just looking at it and trying to compare it this way. So um, like that, that purple color I would guess is somewhere around 80% um, just because I have a trained eye. But um, if, if I go on here, it's somewhere between, looks like 80 and 90%, maybe even close, closer to 100. It's hard to tell with the monitor. But um, that is one way to measure color. So it's important to measure color this way because um, when you have contrast, um, it'll make one color pop versus the other, right? So if you put black and white together, let me show this. Oh, sorry. So if you put, 
So if you put black and white together, right, black and white always looks good together. One, because they're neutrals, but two, because they're opposites. Um, what were we talking about? Um, red and green will always look good together, but if, if these two colors got too close in value, right, if they were both at 50% or 60%, what would happen is the colors would start to vibrate and your eye wouldn't know which one to look at. So um, that is something, as an artist, I've learned to be careful of because you can really mess with somebody's head that way. Yes, sir? What iridescent color? That's a good question. I've never tried iridescent colors. I mean, really what you're looking at as is the tone value. So um, all reds, I believe, are over 50%. Um, a yellow is never going to get higher than like 20% um, on the grayscale. But an iridescent color, I think it would depend on the base color. Um, yeah, if it's orange or green or black, uh, well, not black, <laughs> purple, right, red, whatever color you're using is what you're really measuring, not the iridescence. But that is an interesting concept. Um, all right. So, yeah, just some colored film can help you see the, um, oh, can I get the, it doesn't have to be red. It could be green or blue or whatever colored film you can find kind of acts as a color filter and it helps you to measure color a little easier against the grayscale. And I just learned that a couple weeks ago. So I keep learning. The Pantone chart? What about the Pantone chart? Well, the Pantone, Pantone colors just, it's another color system, sort of like what I've done here. Um, there, there's a lot more colors, but to figure out what the, the value of the color is, right, on a grayscale, 1 to 100 or 1 to 10, um, something like this colored film over the color would help you know what the, the value of the color is. Does that make sense? So the value of a color is measured by the grayscale. So like this color I'm wearing, it's a really dark purple, might be like 95% on here. Um, the, the lightness or darkness of the color is called the value. The tone of the color, yes. And these words are like maybe not the words we use in art, but for you to understand, yes, yes. Yes. So let's see. Um, like I said, yellows never get over like 20%. Actually, yeah. Can I get the overhead? Okay. So, in fact, that's almost. So I have 10 and 20 here. I'd say that yellow is somewhere around 10%. What do you think? Okay. So then for something that's going to really pop next to it, a purple is its complement. So those look pretty nice together. What do you think? A purple and a yellow. And this is like somewhere around 70 or 80. Yeah. So... The further apart they are, the more that yellow or purple is going to pop. If you had a vessel that you made and it's mostly yellow and you put a little purple accent, that purple is really going to sing against that yellow. Okay. Yes? People that produce TV shows, do they have a color expert that helps them do costumes and backgrounds? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. Yes. Yes. No, probably not, but um, 
I mean, if you if you watch commercials or television shows, they are color coordinating what the characters are wearing, what the background looks like. Color is like a really big key. Yes. Yes. Um, do, are you, do you have something specific in mind, an example no, of? Yes. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, so I wanted to show you some examples that I've created. Um, coloring wood and I've used different um, different media or you know paint versus even food color which bleeds like crazy don't use food color um, marker um, wood dye I've used all different things on different kinds of wood and so what I did essentially was um, I think this one's a little redder I took say a red wood this is uh, cedar, okay? And then on one side, I went down and I added, let's see, a stain, some acrylic paint, and then I did its complement in um, a stain and acrylic paint. And then I put a varnish on half, just to see what the wood does with different, different treatments going on. So these I'll pass around so you can check them out. If there's anything interesting that you see, um, you may want to take notes on that. So these are my reds. My second red wood was a honey mesquite. And these have, the color has gone down a little. I think I did these about six months ago. And so this cedar is a little less red than it was when I first created this. And this um, mesquite is a little more brown than it was originally. Okay, should I start them over here? Yes, acrylics are opaque. But translucent. Yes, yes. Right. That's true, and some people like that. But I mean, honestly, I haven't um, I haven't dyed any any of the pieces that I've turned actually. So like this necklace, it's a purple heart and either a yellow heart or bow dark and a Sorry, and a walnut, the wood. huh? Sorry, exactly. So I'm I've been using color woods or um, like those cookies I turned. I didn't I didn't add any color to those. I really appreciate the natural color of things, but I know um, sometimes you guys like to decorate things, add some detail, or even if you do an inlay with another color wood, it helps to have some knowledge of color. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. And you mean translucent? Um, yes. Oh, um, he was just saying you can dry brush and do a lot of different things to let the, the grain show through. Yes, sir. So, mixing those colors, mm -hmm. you wanted a maroon versus a pink. How would you get a maroon color? A maroon color instead of a pink? Well, yeah, well start out Okay, truthfully, a pink requires a little bit of white mixed with the red. Um, so a maroon is between purple and red. If you add a little pink, uh, a little white to it, suddenly you have a pink, a nice pink color. Uh-oh, what do you have against orange? That, oh, okay, this is some team stuff. Okay, so speaking of orange, 
I have some Osage orange here, which is also Bodark. Um, it was more yellow when I started, but it's called Osage orange, so this is my orange wood. Um, like I said, this half has a varnish, and I just, I wrote on the back what treatment I did to the, to the wood, okay? And I'll just keep these going. Um, this is a yellow heart, so I guess it looks like the yellow heart, it was closer to the color of the boat art six months ago, but it's starting to get paler, whereas the boat arc is getting browner. Yes. Yellow heart, yes. It's South America or probably right over there. <laughs> it's right over here. The, the, yeah, a bit closer than South America. <laughs> Actually, this purple heart I got right there. <laughs> it's in the necklace. So the greenest wood that I could find locally was um, poplar. Um, there may be something greener. I know, is there a green heart? No, there's no green heart. Is poplar about the greenest? Lignovite. Okay, but that's really expensive and it's exotic, right? It's exotic and it is pricey. Okay, so the lignovitae is green and poplar gets a green tint to it and it's much cheaper and it's local um, but this is the greenest wood I could find okay okay oh yes I did hear about a blue wood that turns blue because of I don't know some bug excrement or something like that um, I think it's some kind of pine. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is some purple heart. Okay. So let's see. You don't like purple heart? Oh, okay. Yeah. This has been, pr well, I've had it for two months. I don't know. Um, so for the holly, my white wood is holly, and um, I did, I, I attempted to um, finish it, and I put this polyurethane finish, I, I brushed it on, and I guess it was humid or something, and it did this weird, like, hairy thing, which you can all see. Um, you might like to try it. I don't know how to recreate this. Um, but then I did a second board, which is much cleaner. Um, let's see. And then I did some brown woods, just so you could see different browns. I did a white oak and a black cherry. Um, for these, I added silver and gold. So um, silver, to me, is much like a gray and gold is much like a brown. And as we discussed, a brown is a little warmer and a silver or a gray is a little cooler. Um, just, that's just additional information. So um, again, silver and gold are considered neutral colors. All right. Um, this is black walnut. So this is one of the darker woods that I had. Um, for my demonstration a few months ago, I had um, some ebony that was loaned to me. And it was interesting because when I did a spray finish and then used some cheap dollar store food color on top, the color showed really bright on top of the black wood. So if anybody wants to experiment with that, that's just some information I'm putting out there. And then this piece of um, box elder, I sprayed one side and not the other, um, just you, so you can see, you know, the difference that a little finish makes. I've had it for six months. I don't know how old it is. Actually, this piece got chopped right in front of me, but I don't know how long it was in storage before it was cut down to size. Is 
George here? George Freeman? No? Okay. That's my wood guy. <laughs> All right. So does anyone have questions while these are being passed around? Yes, sir. Red, yellow, and blue. Mm-hmm. They're just naturally occurring. These are. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hmm. For blue, I believe indigo is used. Um, for the red and the yellow, I'm not so sure. I know. I, yeah, this is like scientific information you're asking me. <laughs> yes, they do. And they're also, those are the colors of light that we see. Yes. Okay, we just learned something. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, these are water-based, latex, house paint, acrylic, yeah. Um, also, I use some, like I said, dollar store food color, which bleeds like crazy. I do not recommend using it. Yeah, it's liquid. And then um, I did use some wood dye, which I don't have here with me. Um, it was a good quality, and it, it's very neat um, because I taped those off and then, you know, brushed the color on. So um, the wood dye that's specific for dyeing wood is very easy to work with, rich colors. Um, and then for finishing, it was one of these two. Other questions? Oh, yes, I see you. <laughs> Are you trying to call attention to that collar? Well, you could go either way. Say you went dark. That light is really going to pop against the dark. Um, but if you have um, a light-colored base with a dark collar, that's going to pop also. It's just you're really going to see that ring if it's white bright because our eyes naturally go to whites and yellows first. Yes. Well, even if you don't have a lot of contrast, the, the, the higher the value, that's where your eye goes first. I mean, the lower the value, sorry. So the closer to zero or white, um, that's where our eyes are going to go first every single time. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, no, I have not. Um, wh what is it that you want to mix with the resin? What is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? So everybody understands... Do you at least all know the primary colors? Wh what are they? Yeah, I thought I heard somebody say green, but 
Okay. <laughs> and according to this guy, what's your name? Kevin. Kevin. According to Kevin, black and white, but they're not really colors. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there's no other questions, I guess that's the end. Thank you.